Well, I learned about hypnosis a long time ago. Uh, when I was, uh, I graduated medical school in 39, and I did my residency in psychiatry at St. Elizabeth's Hospital in Washington. And during my uh, f final year there, uh, Dr. Gustav Aschaffenberg, who was a famous hypnotist from Germany, was then a refugee from Germany, came to the United States, and um, he asked me to help him prepare for the medical exams in America because he had to get his state licensing exams and he wanted to practice in English. So I had several sessions with him going over all the possible questions he would get for the licensing exam. And in return for that, he taught me the art of hypnosis. So that was um, in 1941. Then Pearl Harbor happened. And uh, since I was in the reserve, the Army Reserve, right after Pearl Harbor, I was in the Army. And um, so uh, this was in January 1st and 42. And first they needed young, healthy people in combat. Uh, no, first I was a psychiatrist in the Army for about three months. And I fought me. Then they needed young, healthy doctors in combat. So despite the fact that I was a psychiatrist, they made me a combat surgeon. Uh, um, and, they, and I was uh, assigned to the 1st Infantry Division uh, with the 1st Battalion there. And I was in the invasion of North Africa and all through the Tunisian campaign. And on the, uh, uh, so during that time in combat, I had ample opportunity to make use of what I learned about hypnosis from Dr. Schaffenberg. So it was my first internship in the use of hypnosis. And what I noticed um, uh, vividly was that so many soldiers in combat uh, would, under the stress of combat, would go into spontaneous trance states. And when the operation was over, they somehow reoriented themselves and come back to where they were. And then I noticed where some people, some soldiers were wounded and um, they were uh, so um, absorbed in what was happening with them, they, it were, they were ignoring the pain. And that too was like a spontaneous hypnotic trance. So learning how to use hypnosis to relieve anxiety, to alter pain perception, uh, became like a common experience for me as a combat surgeon. And then I had a vivid experience myself. I was wounded. Uh, about the second day before the end of the Tunisian campaign, a German tank came at us and I, a shell fragment, uh, a, 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 fra a fragment, a steel fragment, hit my right ankle, it burned through my boot, and uh, uh, I, saw, uh, I felt pain, but I didn't know where it was at first. And I looked around, and I saw that piece of steel, and I, I pulled the thing out, and it was so hot, it burned my hand. But then, having seen so many men uh, wounded in different places, I went, well, where else am I hit? So I kept looking around where else, and an aid man came over, and I rolled over my belly, any place else, he couldn't find any place else. When I realized that I was hitting only in one place, I felt wonderful. So even though I knew there was pain there, it didn't make any difference to me at all. He wanted to give me some morphine. I didn't want the morphine. I was so glad to be alive. And then my big worry was they put me in an ambulance to send me back to a collecting station, and there was a big hole in the side of the ambulance uh, it was hit on the way up. And my big worry was that we were going to be hit on the way back. The pain didn't mean a thing to me. So that was a vivid experience about how uh, spontaneous hypnosis enables you to so alter your perceptions that you can learn how to ignore the pain. So I had a vivid uh, initial experience on in how
important hypnosis was that it can occur spontaneously. You can help people go into trance if they're not in a trance, and you can use that kind of concentration to alter various uh, behaviors or perceptions. That was my